I'm Anthony, and I'm in charge of product development here at Garrett Wade, and I'm going to talk about one of my favorite tools, which is the Japanese saw. The difference between a Japanese saw and a Western saw, and a few tips on how to use a Japanese saw if you've never used one before. So to begin with, the Japanese saw cuts on the pull stroke, which means the teeth, which are very finely cut and precise, the teeth are angled up towards the handle, and so as you hold the saw and you work, it cuts on the pull stroke, which has a huge advantage in that it allows you to cut very precisely. You can follow your line and cut quite quickly with it. You might wonder the difference between a Japanese saw and a Western saw. The Western saw, in many ways, is sort of opposite. Uh, the handle, the teeth are aimed down, away from the handle, and you cut on the push stroke, which has a little bit more of a learning curve in that um, you, the, ba the blade sometimes binds in the wood and it twists, and it, it takes a lot of practice to figure out how to cut straight, quickly, and follow the line you're cutting. Uh, a problem that I typically do not have with the Japanese saws. This is the log saw or timber saw and it has these big beautiful aggressive blades that are very sharp and they are also angled back towards the handle for accurate and fast cutting of dry wood outdoors when you don't want or don't need to start up a chainsaw to get firewood cut. Some of the other saws that I oftentimes use uh, gardening, for example, when I have to cut large live branches that don't really fit in my pruner or my lopper, I use this, which is a folding pruning saw, and it has that same nicely cut sharp teeth that are angled towards the handle, and it cuts on the pull stroke and does so very quickly and cleanly. In my workshop, when I'm doing fine woodworking, I use this, which is called a ryoba, uh, it is a, as you can see, two sets of teeth on each side. So on this edge are the rib teeth, and rib teeth are used for cutting straight down the length of the board from one end to the other. And the other edge have uh, fine teeth that are similarly aimed towards the handle of the saw. And these fine teeth are used for cross cut, which is when you cut across the board, as the name implies, cutting the end off, and they make a very clean, neat cut that allows you to have a nice end of your cutoff piece when you're finished. Let me give you a few tips on what that looks like if you were to use the cross cut teeth to cut a piece of board on a line. So I've clamped this board securely to my workbench, and I've drawn my cut line where I'm going to cut the end of the board off. And to start, I'm using the crosscut teeth, which are the even teeth all along the edge. And uh, starting the cut, I'm going to establish the kerf, which is just that little groove that the saw is going to run in. And I'm only going to use the first inch or so of the saw on even pull strokes, very short and controlled, until I have the kerf established. And as my kerf grows, I use more and more of the saw, being mindful to emphasize the pull stroke and using full, even strokes to make the cut. I can even pick up speed as long as I keep my strokes full and even. And there, a nice, clean, accurate cut that was done pretty quickly. So, as I mentioned, we have a couple of different kinds of Japanese saws on the website for various applications. I find them all to be fun and easy to use because they're so efficient. They cut accurately and they cut quickly. And I think you'll enjoy them if you try one.